Hey, this is Michael Emery. Thanks for tuning into the Slow Baja. This podcast is powered by Tequila Fortaleza, handmade in small batches, and hands down, my favorite tequila. Hey, I want to tell you about your new must have accessory for your next Baja trip. Benchmark Maps has released a beautiful, beautiful Baja California Road and Recreation Atlas. It's a 72 page large format book of detailed maps and recreation guides that makes the perfect planning tool for exploring Baja. Pick yours up at benchmarkmaps.com. First of all, cheers, cheers. We're having a cheers, cold <laughs> Tecate. Javier, thank you. You were going to say cheers with a mic. Yeah, that's, I was going to cool. the microphone. <laughs> we had some great tacos at Taco Nazo. Is that how you say it? Yeah, Taco yeah. Nazo. Taco Nazo. Hey, before we get too far, let's just go around here, introduce ourselves. Looks like mic levels are good. It's slow Baja. I'm in Tijuana. And I'm with Javier and Polo, and we're going to introduce them. They're going to introduce themselves. We're going to talk about their Baja adventures, and I'm delighted to be here. So take it away, Javier. My name is Javier, and I'm a native from, from Tijuana, but I was also partially raised in San Diego for a couple of years, and then I came back to Tijuana. And it's just really cool that we can uh, celebrate and being able to talk right now about the, all the adventures in Baja California and also in, you know, in San Diego, California, and it's a, it's a pleasure to be here just talking and having some cold tecates. <laughs> Polo, say hello. So, hey, hello guys, how's it going? Um, my name is Leopoldo. I was born and raised in Tijuana, and since a kid, I have been always been passionate and identified with the Baja Peninsula. I love just nature, being the Sierra, the Secretes, the Pacific Ocean. I think it's a a magical place to explore and, and find yourself and, and just give the value to nature and the, and the world. And I'm super glad you came down here. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming down here to our city. And I'm pretty glad to know people that has, have had like explored Baja Peninsula in a more pristine way. I think I'm, I'm pretty jealous, really. <laughs> like you had the opportunity to see it. In, with more dirt roads and more dirty tacos and more people exploring <laughs> having adventures. Right now, I think we're very, well, spoiled, you know? It's a different way to explore Baja, and well, thank you for coming down here. Well, I, I, I want to say how um, delighted I am, and I'm going to overuse that word many times today, I'm sure, but uh, we started off um, as sort of Instagram friends. You guys have a great site, Baja Adventures, on Instagram, and so I'm looking at what your, your adventures and what you're up to, and then we actually met on the road. I was driving back from the Baja XL, and Ted and I were just hot-footing it for Ensenada because we had massages scheduled at Ensenada Massage, and we were driving literally as fast as that Land Cruiser can go. And we're pulling into some small town south of Ensenada, and I'm checking out you guys in your FJ Cruiser, and I thought, hey, hey, wait a second. I think I know those guys. <laughs> yeah. You were in your funny. truck, I think, with the dogs? I was in the truck with the truck. With the dogs, that's correct. And then uh, we passed right behind. He was like, "That's a cool looking car." And then we saw the stickers. I was like, "Oh, slow Baja." And then we was like, "Hey, how's it going from car to car?" I guess we were in um, what's it in Manadero? We were we were passing through Manadero in this, yeah. in the southern area of Ensenada. Mm -hmm. So a quick exchange of hellos and stickers and whatnot. And I was delighted to see the slow Baja stickers made it on your truck. So that uh, <laughs> that's impressive, Polo. But Today, we're trying to find a time to come down and, and have an adventure with you, and I just couldn't pull it off, but today the adventure was tacos. And can you tell me about this taco shop? Because it was excellent. Uh, taco Naso, it's a pretty good place to just go sit down. It's clean, and they have a good taste, I guess. And usually the locations are pretty easy to you know, access as well. Yeah. Sometimes the parking is kind of hard, but at the same time, you know, service is good, it's fast, tacos are good. And like you were talking about tacos of Frank, those are amazing, but sometimes it's just a hassle to get there. Yeah. <laughs> just for the, you know, to get in, having the tacos yeah. and then. Those tacos, they don't have stickers because we're in Tijuana, <laughs> but they're pretty good. Because really. I, I, I was saying like, if you want to get a good place in Baja and yeah. you want, just want to find out if it's a good place or not, you definitely just need to see if they have stickers. Well, this one doesn't have <laughs> stickers, but they have four places in, in the city and, and they're pretty good, really. So. How would you explain the Tijuana style of tacos or the Baja style of tacos? Cause wow. Well, it's different one. here. It is different. And they're the best, definitely. Absolutely. No <laughs> doubt about it. I don't know. Just, I don't know if it's the ingredients, the idea of making the, the tacos. 
But it's, I mean, you go to other centers of the Republic, and there it's just tacos. But even the tortillas, you know, taste a little bit weird. The we, we can start with the tortilla. Like, yeah, first, of, tortilla. first of all, it's the size. It's not that like huge. It's not super small. It's a medium and good size for your hand. You know, <laughs> first of I all, it's a hand size. Like right? they don't have two tortillas. They only have one. And also, the way they cook the asada, which is like the most common one that we get, uh -huh. they they make it, 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 it's like pretty, not super thin, but it's not thick, you know? It's a good way, good size, and at the same time, they don't make it like super small squares. It's it's like medium size, you know? <laughs> gives, your, yeah. gives your mouth a little something to work on. Exactly. <laughs> they put good onion, they put good sauce, Avocado, it's, it's not like real avocado, it's, it's guacamole. Yeah. And by the end, they just put beans, which is, well, I like to put beans, not everyone puts beans, but I love it. It's frijoles, like an extra... frijoles de la olla. They're not refritos. I don't know how you say it in English. Uh, fried? Beans. Not, fried beans? Not refried beans. They're, refried. they're pinto beans. I don't know how you yes. it. That's a good question. Yeah, but we should probably ask Wikipedia. And one of so Google. you mix it up, everything, and well, now you have your Tijuana style taco. Yeah, and that's a, that's a thing. It's a thing, and it's a beautiful it's a, thing. It's a thing. And it, I guess it goes all the way down to... Yeah. Even in Cabo, they have a couple of nice tacos. Yes, but I don't know. They, they, they put tons of love in this ones. I yeah, I know, and it's quick, and they like like they love to do them, and it's just like, here's their taco, and then it's just amazing. And and there's people who judge like the avocado, the guacamole they do. And that. Like, we have a friend, Herman. You remember Herman? Yeah. He's like, oh, I don't like the guacamole there. And I was like, what? What are you talking about? It's delicious. They don't put that much water. Some of those places, yeah, in, like Central Mexico, I have seen they put more water and it's more liquid. Uh -huh. This one is more like pure avocado Thick. and sometimes they put like onion and cilantro and they mix it up a little bit. A little bit of mayo. Wow. Yeah. And lime, definitely. So you guys uh -huh. do wilderness adventures, but we're, we're off on a taco tangent now, <laughs> which yeah. I love because this <laughs> is, you know, there are so many reasons that people come to Baja I like to talk about all of them, and tacos are certainly one of one of my real passions. But let's get on to you guys are young, both, both under 30, 20, 26 pol years old. Polo, you're 26, 29, 29. So tell me about how you guys formed Baja Adventures, and, and let's get right into what kind of work you guys do. Okay, you want to start or you want to start? Oh, I, I guess I, you can start. Go I ahead. can start. Look, <laughs> I, w I was saying to you, like, years ago, I started, like, traveling, uh, basically, with my dad and my brothers, my stepbrothers. We used to have, like, dinghy boats, inflatable boats, like Zodiacs, and we used to go a lot to Gonzaga Bay. That's how I started traveling down here in Baja. And since that moment, like, I saw Gonzaga Bay. I remember my, my dad told him, like, are we going where? Like, he said, we're going to a hotel. And I always love to see like pools and play in the pool. And I asked him, is there any pools? And he told me, yeah, there's a huge one. <laughs> so we got into Alfonsina's resort. <laughs> we got into the night, you know, it was like a third rail, like for hours. And I remember we stopped by Catavina, like in the, the Hotel Santa Maria. Like this pretty small hotel with like a quick stop where you get your ice cream. Um, yeah, and popsicles. Popsicles, you know, and it was getting dark. And after that, we drove like an hour after that, and we we drove through the dirt road of Laguna Chapala to, to Alfonsina, to the Gonzaga Bay. And well, it, we get there like after a, a crazy adventure, and well, the the sun was rising up, and I just want to go to the pool. And I asked my dad, "Where's the pool?" And he told me, "It's right there." You know, and he pointed me to the Sea Cortez, the bay, and I was like, "Okay." It was like my first interaction with the sea, like. And I remember my dad bringing the bow and we started going to the small bay, like the small beaches, sorry. Um, and it was, it was pretty impressive for me, like really just being in nature and no cell phone. If you want to call, I want to call my mom and we need to go to the, to the store to get the, the satellite, satellite phone, you know, it, it was different, you know, just way different than being in the city. So after that, years ago, like years after that, sorry, um, I started traveling more with myself, with Javier, with friends, and we just have the idea of like showing people the amazing places Baja has, and like nobody put attention to it. Like they just want. I remember like the first time I saw like people going to the Potato Share Block, which is a place in in San Diego, a famous hike trail, and people from Tijuana cross the border, make like hours in the line drove all the way down to well, to this place, the hiking spot, which is like an hour from the border. And well, they pay in dollars, they invest tons of money and time. 
And like, why are you going to that place, which is beautiful, but we also have this beautiful place down here. You should give the ballet to the state and the place you live. So we just start sharing pictures and mm -hmm. videos of the, our adventures, basically. And after that, we start working with Secretary of Tourism and like in campaigns, we start, we got our certifications as a guide and we start bringing down people in tours to Bay of LA, to uh, Sierra San Pedro Marti, Valle Guadalupe. We start doing more trips for ourselves to recognize the area, locations. And basically that's what we do, like tours and also productions, basically. Like making, creating content for companies or the same Secretary of Tourism, which is in here in Baja California. Yeah, Javier, Javier to get it right. <laughs> he did get it right, and it's it's. Just, I'm just gonna uh, piggyback from one of his comments. Polo started with with the sea. Uh, he had a lot of cool adventures with the sea. I started mostly with the off road type of adventures, and it was always an adventure because my dad had a buggy one time. A, uh, then he had a beetle, but he fixed it as a you know off road beetle. It was pretty cool. I loved that car. It had like a really really cool roof rack. It was. The, the car was green and it had a jello uh, roof rack and I remember I used to just jump on it and we were, it was really cool so we did like a lot of cool off-road adventures even one time my dad bought an old jeep and we fixed it and uh, I remember my dad I was so you know so small that uh, I, I didn't uh, get to see outside of the car so my dad will like snug in a bunch of jackets actually you can see the jacket that's hanging out over there that's my dad's jacket and uh, I used to, you know, put him like on the, well, he used to do it for me for pillows so I can, you know, see it on the outside of the car. And we always had really cool adventures and it was him with, with, a, with a couple of friends. One of them is my godfather. And they always had like these really cool routes. Uh, we will leave like at crazy times, you know, like 3, 4 a.m. And we'll get there at the place at night. And it was always such a cool adventure because you definitely felt disconnected because there was nothing at that time, uh, you know, having a satellite phone, it was like a luxury. And, uh, and then the, the real little, you know, hotels or the little ca cabins that you used to get to in Maha, they didn't have anything. Uh, the closest town was maybe, I don't know, Ensenada, San Quintin. It depends where were you at, there you could actually get a phone and call somebody. So you were always basically not on your own because you always had friends with you that knew like oh this happened to me once and i fixed it like this and this happened like that and we had to take the car over there so i guess that's how i started with my dad and uh, i was i was probably six or seven years old and it was always an adventure probably the similar as, as polo uh that i was expecting something where they was just like oh shoot we're actually gonna sleep here in the middle of all these bushes and the cars are just parked there <laughs> and it was pretty cool pretty uh crazy stories too like sometimes one time like Military came up. I don't know where. Nothing negative, but it's just you know in, in Baja, as we all know, like sometimes you know military is used as law enforcement, uh, like off roading with Humvees and stuff. So it's pretty cool. And um, yeah, just I guess what I like about Baja is how it's still connected to the wilderness. That it was you know a dream in the in the in a couple of years back, not a couple a long time ago. In California, you still have, get that wild feel here in, in Baja California, and. Just to cut it back a little bit shorter, I met Polo in one of those trips. We went to what was it, Laguna Hanson? Yeah. We already met him before, but I met I uh, we went the to Laguna Hanson. Another kind of adventure. <laughs> and that was yeah, that was like a, a different kind of adventure. It was divided between two groups: the people who loved you know outdoors and camping, and then there was the other people who loved partying. So I remember we divided the camp between two, and then in the middle we have like a middle ground that everyone could like enjoy themselves, you know, have a drink and party a little bit, and then go to sleep. So I, th I think it was in that trip, right? That we, yeah. we, we, were, we were in your black F-150 Lobo yeah. truck and uh, we, were, we, we got there from one round and then Alfred or our friend told us, let's go and take another route. You don't have, you don't have a four wheel drive, it's okay, we can make it. And it, let me tell you, it was kind of an adventure and that's how I met Polo and after that trip, I think we, we spoke, we sat down, I was like, dude, I think not only we should do it like as a hobby, I think it's, you know, it's, a, it's our hobby, but why don't we do something more with it? So, because we love doing these adventures and not only do we want to communicate the amazing things that we are, but we also want to educate people right. about the, the responsible way of, of, of adventuring, right? Because people think about, oh, I'm just going to go on a bench and get a bowie knife and like, cut some trees. And I was like, no, like, you need to do certain things that's sustainable. And, you know, try to make a uh, positive impact with you as, as the adventure guide or leader. Because a lot of times people take other people who have no idea about how to put a tent, about how to make a responsible fire pit those little details that uh you know and that's when i started talking with with polo about it 
to do something with, you know, cool with Baja Adventures. You know, we can't wait to drive our old Land Cruiser down to Baja, and when we go, we go with Baja Bound Insurance. Their website's fast and easy to use, Baja Bound Insurance, serving Mexico travelers since 1994. Hey, do you have a 4x4? You love off-road racing? You got to join Slow Baja in the Nora 500. It's Ensenada to Ensenada, three great days, October 7th through 10th. Kurt LaDuke, Off-Road Hall of Famer, leads the class. If we can do it in our old truck, you can do it. Get your street legal 4x4, get into the safari class, and I'll see you in Ensenada. More info at Nora.com, that's www.norra.com, or on Slow Baja. And so Baja Adventures is very cool and had a pretty tough year, I'd imagine, with COVID. So what kind of adventures uh, ha- did you have last year and what do you plan for the future? I guess the, the adventure we had last year was mostly individual adventures, right? It was me, you, probably another yes. car. Uh, everyone was in the car using masks. And I guess the last adventure that we did was when you went to, to Erendira? Well, like, no, no, no. Like, was like, like last year's adventures, we didn't make any trips for people. But mm-hmm. we work with Secretary of Tourism, and we they hire us. They hire a company that makes films, like, like movies in general, and they hire us to share them locations. And like I think the position it's called like logistics, logi- lo- like location like, manager. I think yeah, your location work scouts. A scouting basically. Yeah. So I, we help them with scoutings for the campaign of this year of, of Secretary of Tourism. And now they also hire us uh, Rosarito and other brands like, like um, for Laha. products and Laha. yeah, for just creating publicity for them and sharing those experiences or products in our social media. And we'll share it to the people that it's a good place. For example, Rosarito, most of the people, they just think Rosarito is a place for party, for papas and beer and to the beach. But if you go to the Sierra area, well, the countryside, mm-hmm. it's beautiful. Like, there's tons of things you can do. Horseback rides, you can go rock climbing, you can do mountain biking, you Hidden can do like overland. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. And we want to share and help Rosarito to share those places with them. Yeah, I guess that's a really good point. Uh, that's another thing that we want to share in Baja. It's not only partying in Baja. It's, you know, exploring really hidden places that you can get this amazing cheese in the middle of nowhere and it's like a really popular cheese between the people from the community yeah. like in the you know in uh, El Gato Maranero, it's like the ranch was right there and we got this really good yeah. cheese and we, we loved it and I guess in mining people always it's in our you know in our back of our head it's you know trying to invite people to do it in a sustainable way and here's the way to do it yeah. like you don't even have to think about it just you know be safe about it you know make sure your car has sufficient oil or you know those little things before you leave and you know, be safe about it, have yeah. fun, and uh, if you have any questions, just you know, send yeah. us a quick. The yeah. cool thing about this, for example, this campaign with Rosarito was also that, like a lot of people, they want to go out, but they don't want to go that far, for example, Bay of LA. And we, the, we live in the city here in Tijuana, and we need this mini adventure. We want to just get out and get some fresh air. Well, we never look at it, like the, the countryside of Tijuana, the countryside of Rosarito, and these places are, are beautiful, really. They have deer, they have like rattlesnakes, they have this ranch life you can experience mm-hmm. and you can see cows, you can make a horseback ride, you can like talk with people there, like growing bees and, and, yeah. and the honey. Like, the jelly, the Jamaica jelly, it was yeah. amazing. So it, it was pretty cool to start getting to know more the places are near in our area also. Because we always want to go like Catavina and Bahia San Luis Gonzaga. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, Bahia even LA. Ba- Baja Sur. But why do we need to go that far? We have all these places as well. Like, mm-hmm. it, and it was cool to experience and to get to know the owners of those ranchers. And they want to get more publicity because they want to get people in those places mm-hmm. and show them what they have here. So r- working with Rosarito was pretty fun. We're still working with them. And we want to make more content for other places in here as well. So within an hour from here, yes. from Tijuana, yeah. Yeah. you can be into real wilderness. I mean, yeah, it, you, you know, can. you can be without phone signal. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Let's and, say it again. And, geez, and, yeah. and we have friends. Well, like his dad friends that they say like years ago they used to make like trips all the way to Cabo and started from Tijuana and since it's in the dirt road in motorcycles like in buggies without yeah. like driving without license plates. And it's the beautiful thing about here. 
So we want to we wanna look for those places as well. Yeah, I get the wilderness place. And, and I guess that brings us back to one of your original questions is uh, what trips we have planned on, on the future. Is We have two trips that we want to plan. Uh, I guess it's the same type of uh, trip, but it's basically taking people on excursions. And one of them is going to be Uber Landing. With, you know, with your, if you have a Jeep, if you're a Toyota or a Jeep fan, you know, <laughs> we take any if you want to go. But as long as you have like an off-road vehicle that you want to test out, you want to go and explore, learn how to do certain things with the off-road vehicle, because we have had some friends that, you know, they have their trucks, but they don't usually know how to, you know, properly use them off-road. That's one of the trips, and we're going to name it Overlanding in Baja. And at the same time, we want to do a vintage type of motorcycle rides. And when I say vintage, it's like maybe a Scramblers type of old school. And, for example, I have an XR650, and that one will be considered kind of a vintage, it's a 2000, and it's been to Cabo. And it's pretty cool, and I need to do that as well. My uncle took that bike, and those are the two types of trips we want to do right now. Uh, but, but we don't want to make it like only like off-roading. We want to yeah. share people the experience of being in, in expedition, Thank but you. at the same time, like being able to have these encounters with animals. Like for example, mm-hmm. stopping by by Los Angeles and swim with the whale shark, for example, or get to know like the small this the small communities and probably yeah. get a a, f- a food uh, a class or like cooking or get to. I don't know, yes. make a horseback, right? Like making the expedition in your own car because I, I really love the expeditions in your own car. Like it's, it's, it's cool. It's cool. Like you, you prepare to be uh, autonomous? autonomous, autonomous, basically. Self-sufficient. Self-sufficient, Self-sufficient that's in a your word car. Thing. But at the same time, we're helping you to make this legit. Obviously, like, we're yeah. going to help you. Obviously. But it's, I love the way that you just travel in your own car. It, it's different. I, and I, now with COVID, like, if you're in your own car, it's like you can be more protected. I guess what you're trying to mean is you get two experiences, obviously off-roading, but at the same time you get the experience in something that's you know yes. only to Baja. You, you go fishing, maybe you get a Dorado or something, I don't know. Yes. You bring it back to the shore and we have the chef that's just gonna teach you how to, you know, prepare it in a specific Baja style. Yes. Or if you wanna, like if we're in the motorcycle trips and we stop in Guerrero Negro, where you can go and see the, the gray whales, and that's going to be a double, and, right? And, and protect the area that we have, because, yeah. like, you know, Baja is well known for being a place to just off-road, you know? And you can, whatever you want, you're going to pass through the dunes, you want to pass through the forest, you want to pass through anywhere, the rivers, you can do it because there's nobody seeing you, watching you. Or, or even the, the government is not going to do nothing, really. But it's also like to teach people that we have pristine places, but we need to protect them. And probably can pass through like the off-road trails, but we are not gonna like make a huge impact in those places. We want to give the tread, value to tread the lightly is the way we say it. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna have low impact, no impact. Exactly. Yeah. That's the idea. You're looking for an opener. Yeah. Javier's okay, bringing the second for, round of beer. We're getting some Braha brewing. We've got some locals uh-huh. now. Agamala. Uh, it's got a red IPA, the Mareja Roja. Ma- how would you Mare, say Mareja that? Roja. Mare, Mare, I need to have one more beer to loosen my tongue. <laughs> Mareja Roja. And then we have uh, Harry, Harry Polanco, another red ale. And then a Baja Brewing Amber Ale. Pelirrojo. Pelirroja. Pelirroja. So let's talk about, um, let's, let's transition out of the wild and get back into the wilds of Tijuana. The food, beer, crazy scene here. It's good. Really. I mean, it's it's happening. Yes. Right here. <laughs> what's it like? What's it like for you, uh, young, young, good-looking guys like you, <laughs> going out in, in Tijuana? I mean, does it feel like it's opening up finally after a year? Yes, it's definitely opening up. I saw people in restaurants without masks. The staff is wearing masks, so it's just like San Francisco now here. I read recently that uh, all adults have been vaccinated uh, here, so you're, if that's... We if got that a is lot in, of vaccines. Yeah, if that is indeed true, that's fabulous. Um, what's it feeling like? Well, it's weird, you know? I, I think it's in, in general, all parts of the world must have this same feeling. But just being able to be back outside is good, really. But at the same time, I don't know, COVID 
Come hit us, you know. Come yeah, hit, hit you Tijuana. hard. Yeah. But besides Tijuana in general, it's a place where we get people from all around the world, really. A lot of people get here from central Mexico, from southern Latin America, to cross the border to get this dream job, dream opportunity. And well, now being able to be back outside, it's, 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 it's weird. I don't know. I love it. I love being outside, but I prefer still being outside in nature, you know. <laughs> Polo's not vaccinated. He's a little worried. <laughs> I, I, I don't really. We're, we're worrying. We're, we're already vaccinated his, here. His so. dad's a doctor. His dad's a doctor. He's good he's to go. Worried. But yeah, I, I guess for me, the the feeling was mutual. Like, I, I, I'm not really of a party scene type of person, but I do enjoy the restaurants and the breweries here in Tijuana. And it was a, it was kind of a. I don't want to say a shame, but it was kind of hard because there's so many cool restaurants, so many cool breweries that you can go and check out new beers. And and I don't know, with COVID, it was like a lot of restrictions, a lot of you can't. And I guess the coolest part is that we were able to go off-roading and uh, on adventures. The only thing is, at the beginning of the pandemic, we were really, really, uh, uh, I guess, careful in going to other communities because we didn't want to, you know, spread the, the, the disease. So we were taking our extreme measures of, you know, using a mask if we were going somewhere else because early on we investigated that the COVID got, you know, transmitted by air. So we always wore our masks and there was like, is it N95 masks? So just to make sure that we weren't uh, doing anything, you know, that would affect the communities. And, and we, we actually limited going to, you know, for, to Bahia Los Angeles, to Gonzaga, and we went to like really specific places just to camp by ourselves. And if we bought any groceries, it was here in, in Tijuana. But yeah, I, I guess going back to the, to the question is here in Tijuana, I think it's amazing all Baja that we have like this really, really, I'm gonna use the word cool restaurants and uh, not only cool looking, but also deliciously made creative yes. plates. And you, you find this uh, cranberry sauce that it's made with some duck and you're like, what? That's actually a really creative person, an artist, I guess, chef. And yeah, and we have, you know, Baye, Tijuana, and Tanada. The Baja Met food style. Baja Met food it's, style. It's just amazing. Good, really. And it, it really does seem like it's, um, it's endemic now. It seems like it's deeply rooted. It's here. And it's not, it's not when I used to come to, to Tijuana when I was, eh, back when I was your age, kids. <laughs> I'd come down here. No, I mean, it was... There was so much here that was for Americans, gringos coming in for the day. Yes. And that's and it was, you know, cheap drinks and big plates and all that. And it just really strikes me now is that Tijuana's grown up and it's for the Tijuanense. It's for the people here. Well, that's true. Like well, Baja California depends a lot on tourism, right? But now after COVID, we have had more local tourism, like exploring their own state. That's true. Yeah, but the the only thing, have you been to Bayou, for example? Yes, I've, I I have, but I haven't spent enough time there. Mm -hmm. But what what was your impression about that place? Well, you know, I grew up. Yeah, it's a good good, yeah, huh? Good. Sorry, yeah, sorry, we're drink, we're drinking we're drinking these red beer. beers. <laughs> um, you know, I grew up very near to the Napa Valley, Sonoma Valley, so I've seen the wine boom in California and when you used to just drive uh, in the 70s when I would drive uh, to Napa and there would be lots and lots and lots and lots of open space from where I lived which was only less than an hour away and now when you drive well you know this is protected by the land trust and then there's just vineyards and vineyards and vineyards and wineries and wineries and restaurants and so it's in 30 years 40 years it's really it's really um grown to be quite crazy frankly i mean so you know napa is is a wine disneyland it doesn't feel real it well, doesn't feel rural well i'm asking you this because I have this same impression of Bayou Guadalupe. So, I, re I really love the place, I really love the food, the wine's amazing, but the thing is, it's a place right now that is giving more importance to the tourism so they can use a toilet. The water is, is more used in the toilet than in the same wine right now. Baja, we don't have water. Right. The water that we get depends from the Colorado River. Yeah, And you're not getting that water. <laughs> it's no, we, getting we, used we're, before it gets we're here. We're not getting any kind of water, you know? So. I feel right now it's super commercialized and, and 
I love the place. I know I love people coming down here, but I think we're not going to, we're not taking a good route, you know? Well, what, what's interesting to me, and I, I'll defer to you obviously being local and, 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 and spending much more time there than I have, but what is still interesting to me whether it's 120 wineries and 160 inns or 160 wineries and 120 inns, whatever that number is, I don't have it right, but More it's- More than 200, definitely. That's crazy, but there's still dirt roads and there's still small operations. So not everything is a well-funded, highly mm -hmm. advertised commercial operation. So for me, for Slow Baja, I wanna go with you guys and find out Who's doing the... Oops. Yeah, the Mexican who, alarm here. Who's doing the interesting <laughs> wine? You know, whether it's the uh, Herr Teles doing the naked wines or, or something. What's, what's happening that I'm not seeing? That's what I'm interested in. And so while, I'm, while I, I agree with you that it's concerning about what's happening and the draw of tourism may not be sustainable it may already surpassed instability now, and there's no chance of sustainability. But before it's ruined completely, I want to spend a couple of good days <laughs> drinking wine there and checking it out. <laughs> and I hate to say it that way, but no, I do. I, mean, uh, I do. I guess it's just uh, one of the important factors of humanity and you know the planet. I don't want to get too deep into it, but I, I do get point uh, both sides of the coin that it's. It's a place where you know wine, the wine is already doing, it's booming, it's uh, tourism, but at the same time you're like, okay, it's impacting the land in it and the surrounding lands. Because as we said, water is one of the most important um, elements that we're missing here in California, Baja California, and it's not a, we don't have a natural water supply. So I, I guess it's just one of those um, things that I wish there was moving more organization. Uh, and I do get your point. You want to go and taste some of those wines before they get, <laughs> you know, overly consumed or something like that. But at the same time, I would recommend some of the hotels and the restaurants are pretty good. But I'll, I'll, I'll let uh, Polo, he was going to make a comment right now. I don't want to generalize. Obviously, there's good people make, trying to make good projects. Or since years ago, they started this small winery. Now they have grown up during the years, right? But what I feel is that right now people is going more to Valle Guadalupe because it's the trend, not because they want to get wine. Actually, they're not even asking for wine. They're asking for cheap cocktails, what you said, right? And they just want to get the picture in the Valle Guadalupe because it's something fancy and because their friends went and they want to be part of the same movement, right? That's one thing. And the other thing is, as a, like, I think like businessmen, they, you just want to try to buy land and make this hotel or resort or whatever because people are paying $300, $400, $500 per night in a hotel room, which is expensive, right? It's a good business. It's okay. But it's, it's losing the mission of the place, right? And I don't want that to happen in Obaja. Imagine if this happens to Obaja, like San Juanico, I don't know. Uh, Gonzaga Bay, available in Los Angeles. Like it, these pristine places are amazing, but we don't want this happens to other parts of Baja Peninsula. So let's talk about your next adventure. You've got a vintage motorcycle uh, rally going into in Erin. Erendira. I I need to it's really okay, work on that. It all, it catches me every time. Erendira. Erendira, huh? And so that's a beautiful little spot. It's when you drive over the dirt road from, is it San Telmo? Is that mm -hmm. where you would go over from there? Santo Tomas. Yes. Santo Tomas, excuse me. So yes. Santo Tomas, you're over the dirt, you come up right, right above on the cliffs and you're looking down at the beach. It's all good. That's an amazing view. It is. And yeah. Cal is that Calavera Beach? Yeah, Playa Calavera. Playa yeah. Calavera. But we're going to call, it's called Rancho La Concha. Oh, this weekend? No, not this weekend. Uh, this weekend for the 4th of July, we're going to go do a little scouting trip. We're going to go with San Quintin. Then we're gonna, correct me if I'm wrong, Polo. He's the one with usually with the logistics. <laughs> and we're going to come back uh, from San Quintin, and we're going to see some of the routes to get to, to Erendira, to Rancho La Concha, yeah. which is where we want to take the, the vintage riders that like yeah. crazy adventures. We're going to go ourselves. sleep to San Quintin, and after that, we're going to go drive up to Camalú, and then going to head to the dirt road of all the Pacific coast, basically, which is yeah. Camalu, Colonet, and well, Santelmo, Colonet. You pass through uh, Cuatro Casas, and then you get to um, 
San Antonio, La Plaza Antonio, Colonnade, and then you get to Arendira, and then you get to Santo Tomas. It's a pretty good place. Like all yeah. that dirt road's amazing, and the cliffs and the beaches are beautiful. Well, let's talk about dirt roads for a little bit. Um, that's what really interests me. That's why I come, <laughs> honestly. I, I think it's amazing, you know, Compadre Trail and the roads we were just talking about. There are an awful lot of dirt roads still in Baja. Yes. Yeah. They're and these are, these are public, mm-hmm. public roads, yeah? Mm-hmm. Most of the time? Well, right? sometimes we get into, like, ranches, but you need to open the, the gate and close yeah. it, right? But usually you can get in, but... He's being respectful. Exactly. Like if they go and ask, like, who's your, your oh, my name is so-and-so, and I'm going to, uh, I don't know, Playa, yeah. da-da-da. And or or like, just oh. get 50 pesos, like three, four dollars, yeah. and everything cool, right? <laughs> everything cool. A couple it's, of part, it's part of the deal, right? Yeah. You're passing through the ranch. So it's not common in my life in San Francisco that I'm driving around on dirt roads. But again, you know, very close to where we are here in a major city, mm-hmm. they're dirt roads that you guys can be sort of yeah, out as I say desolation on a doorstep and it's you know it's it's out and about and you can be out and see one car two cars or no cars probably in 40 minutes without traffic we can get to an off-road and then yes. like off-road for a little bit and then come back yes and then start your day working if you're that you know aficionado which I think <laughs> I based on the look of your both of your eyes I think you are <laughs> but yes basically yeah we have a lot of off-roading and as Polo was saying you know just being respectful with the hidatarios sometimes they do get pissed but most of the times they're like, you know, cool, because it's a, uh, sometimes it's good for them because people usually take him stuff or food, you know, new, even news, news, and even uh, pay, you know, 100 pesos, 60 pesos to go into a place, and it's a good revenue. Yes, hmm? yes definitely. All right, well, we're going we're gonna to wrap up. You guys have been pretty uh, generous with some taco time and a couple of beers. Um, if you were... I'm looking at you, Javier. If if you've got one spot and you're taking your buddy or you're taking your girl or you're taking your dogs and you're going for four days. Okay. Where are you going? Wow. Wow. Four days? Four okay, days. Sir, I will go on a one. Give me a give me a three night, four day. I will go to I, honestly I will go to Valle Los Angeles because there's a lot of things to do there. You know, not only chill, but you can also do some adventure stuff and you can go exploring some of the caves and some stuff. So I will probably go to Valle Los Angeles, take my dogs so they can run like crazy and, you know, have a good time with a, with a couple of friends as well. I like it. And when you're there, are you camping? Uh, it depends. If we're going to so go... So give me three options. We have two options. We have the, you know, like the most like chill option, which we're going to go to a hotel. We're going to have some AC. We're going to have some, uh, you know, a little bit chill. Campo Chalón, definitely. Campo Chalón, definitely. This time of year, AC is important because, yeah, because it's it gets really hot. hot it gets really hot. That's, this is why I'm saying this, uh, the listener. And if we're going to go, you know, like a little bit more, you know, four by four rugged, uh, we'll go definitely go camping. And I would love to experience going camping to one of the beaches. Uh, obviously, you know, leave no trace principles and stuff. And then just... Um, organize the logistics so that Panguero can go and pick me up on the you know the third day, and obviously have all the safety measures like a, maybe a satellite phone in case something happens. But those will be my two options in in Bay of LA. Like either camping, yes, but I will go to one of the beaches, down one of the islands actually, and uh, or even to one of the, the beaches you can get in the car, or stay at a hotel and then from the hotel just move around. It can be my my center point. And you had mentioned Archelon, so let's talk about that a little bit. It's kind of a cool spot. It's it really is. cool, yeah. It's it's really cool. I think the people are also amazing, and I I think not only cool, but I think the location is perfect. Uh, so it's it's yeah. cabins, it's camping. Let's both of them. Both of them. Yeah. You can no, do, I mean, you can I'm take sorry. I'm saying yes. There's, oh, yes. There's <laughs> yes. There's yes. Yes. There's all those. Yeah. Indeed. Um, so yeah, I like Comfort Alone. Yeah, when you get there, you get this really cool vibe. It's just been there for a couple of years, uh, you know, many years, and you know, you see this whole. As Polo was saying at the beginning of this podcast, you see stickers, but instead of like you see stickers, but you see all the things. You see maybe like an old beat up uh, gas tank that's still being used, or you see this old hat sombrero that's hanging there, and that hat and sombrero has a, spe- a specific story of who took it there and why they put it there. So, and Campuchelon has that, and you know the people who also Campuchelon are pretty pretty amazing people, and, and the location is, is pretty cool too. You can get you know to the town really quick, or you can go to the this is a gringa. It's like Right over yes. there, so it's 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 pretty cool. I like it. And if you can do car camping, or you can do regular camping, or you know, um, getting a, a nice camp. Yeah, cabins and hotels and yeah. whatnot. Polo. 
three days, uh, f three nights, four days. Well, where where are you going? Have you already said about Valle de Los Angeles, which I think is a good place. But if you don't want to go that far, I think La Mision is a good place to visit. Really, we just sometimes we we we, had, we went to we go to Ensenada, we go to Valle Guadalupe, we pass through there, but we never see that place. And it's a beautiful place. Like we have the beach, we have the story, we, we the Stuario. Yeah, we have the like Marty Harriman. She has this horseback rides in Rancho La Pila, which is amazing. You can go hiking, you can go rock climbing, you can you yeah you, you can do Definitely. tons of things. Really, you want to go to Bahia, you can go to Bahia. You want to go to Sanaa, it's, it's like a it's a place which is in, in a very strategic location. So, and you don't want to drive that far. You don't want to invest that much time in the road. La Mission is a good place, really. La Mission is just uh, north of Ensenada, it's right? It's, it's, and it's, it's a what? town which has always been fight between Ensenada and, and, Rosarito. and Rosarito. Like the, half yeah, of the right. town, it's part of Rosarito, and half of it, it's part of Ensenada. And it's a, weird. But. Yeah, <laughs> big beach, estuary. Um, you can do kayaking, you can do surf, you, you can, can do horseback riding, you can do everything of that. Like on four days, <laughs> like one day you can do fancy bayou, yeah. another day you can be beach, another day you can be yeah. you know, estuario. Although they can do ranching, you know, they can do, you know, like chilling, maybe a cool for a horseback ride. And I think, Polo, you, that's a really good point you're making there. You want to go to Bahia? Let's go to Bahia. It's 30 minutes from us. Like, you want to, you can go anywhere in that place. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, I really appreciate you spending a little time with me on a Monday. Uh, I enjoyed the <laughs> tacos. I hope we're going to have some fun after we turn the microphones off. And uh, to find you guys, uh, Instagram, it's Baja Adventures. Yeah, the, yeah. Same, where else? the same A of Baja is the same A of Adventures. So it's Baja, Baja D Adventures. <laughs> yeah. Say it again. So Baja D Adventures. Like we we skip one A, basically. We, sk we skip, <laughs> skip the oh, Adventures yeah. A. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So, There's yeah. not two A's in a row. Yeah. You'll find it. Your algorithm will pop you right up. If you like slow Baja, I'm sure if you type in Baja. Come on. Uh, that second A, if you miss it or type it in, Baja Adventures will pop up. It's full of uh, beautiful pictures of great adventures, and I'm delighted to be here. Javier, anywhere else to find you guys on the internet? BajaAdventures.com. BajaAdventures.com. The same, mm -hmm. BajaAdventures.com. Yeah, Baja, <laughs> yeah. drop that second A, <laughs> Adventures. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, guys. It's been Thank fun. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. Let's go for a little cheers before we leave. Ching, ching. Ching, ching. So they get so what do you say here when you say cheers? What do you Salud. say? Salud. Salud. O parria pa you know, like the whole chimichanga, but <laughs> it's a Monday, so we're chilling. All right, thanks, guys. Slow Baja's wardrobe is provided by Taylor Stitch. Responsibly built for the long haul, Taylor Stitch makes clothes that wear in, not out. Wherever your adventure takes you, Taylor Stitch has you covered. Check them out at taylorstitch.com. Hey, you guys know what to do. Please help us by subscribing, sharing, rating, all that stuff. And if you missed anything, you can find the links in the show notes at slowbaja.com. I'll be back before you know it. And if you want to receive notices on new episodes, please follow Slow Baja on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook for you old folks.